Gig Gab, episode 131 for Wednesday, September 13th, 2017. <music> Greetings, folks, and Welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast for, by, and about working musicians. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Out in Las Gatas, California, Paul Kent. How you doing, Mr. Kent? I'm doing pretty good, Dave. We're a little late this week. We are. Schedules happen. Life, Life happens. Life in the way. Life yeah. happens. Yeah. 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 Sorry about but that, folks. Yet, we are here. We are here. Yeah. Yeah. Did you gig this weekend? I had five gigs last week. It was a really fun week with a lot of things going on. Um, I had a corporate gig. I had a club date. I had, um, you know, quite a things, quite a few things going on. This week is another week of four in a row, which is kind of cool. Um, I did an acoustic gig with Simon from the House Rockers at a new venue. That was pretty cool. Um, I did a solo acoustic gig up at a winery. So I nice. had a busy week. Yeah, it was really cool. But the thing I wanted to talk about today was I actually have a very big thing happening in my musical life right now. And that is that... Um, for the first time in 15 years, I have to look for a new drummer for the house rockers. My buddy Joe has decided to step down from his position. It's a, it's a very um, amiable thing. It's just sure. Um, sure. where we are and what we do and how often we do it. You know, like we said in the top of the show, um, you know, life gets in the way. And so it's, it's time. Um, it's a, uh, it's hitting me in a much more intense way than I, than I, well, I, I can't say I didn't anticipate it would hit me in this way when I, I foresaw it coming, but it's shaking up so many things in my personal and music life. It's a, it's, I'm, I'm a little surprised and, uh, I'm really like having my, a hard time getting my hands around it. So, so there's the whole thing of dealing with the loss of being able to play with my great friend. Right. Right. And then there's also the unknown about how it's going to work out. You know, and it's also, you know, I have a band of, you know, really demanding musicians who expect, you know, a lot and they have slightly different views. You know, they all want the best drummer for the house rockers. They all have a different perspective about what the best drummer <laughs> for the house rockers is, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm on the other side of this, right? Having just joined um, Uptown Celebration. But I mean, I've, I've done this a couple of times as as that guy. But I've also I haven't replaced a drummer in a band that I've been in, but we've placed we've replaced, you know, other members and. And there's always that, you know, everybody it gets to a point where you you um, accept is the wrong word, but I'm going to use it for efficiency. It, everybody accepts everybody else as just full fledged members of the band. And that's what this band is. Right. And you you come in and, you know, and none of us are the perfect musician for everything. Right. And so it, we all have our limitations. And, and part of being in a band is is is. Uh, accepting, okay, that's what this person's good at. That's what they're not good at. And we, we make this work together. Right. And that's, yeah. that's part of the charm of it. But as soon as a hole opens up, everybody starts thinking, okay, well, there is that one thing yeah. that, you, you know what I mean? Like, and, and the, the, the worst part about that is it's really easy to overlook all the good things that that person you're replacing brings to the table. And and I don't just mean like, like things that you would highlight. It's just like they show up on time. They play like, you know, 80% of the material exactly the way we, we, we need it played. Right. It's like, it's so easy to, to nitpick and say, yeah. well, there's that one tiny little thing. And suddenly that's what the conversation's about. And you completely lose sight of, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Like, if we could replace this person, like if you if you think of every gig as everyone is replaced with themselves every <laughs> single time, like, would you change that? And the answer yeah. in most cases is no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> no. I can actually take that one further. So, you know, uh, Joe um, was truly, you know, now that we're getting some distance from this. Right. So, you know, we talked about it a few months ago and, you know, we've been kind of in touch about it, but the thing that's reverberating, reverberating with me is how much the center of my band's soul vibe he 
held from that thrown behind the drums. Totally. How much of, you know, the, how much of the perception of the band from the audience's perspective? Cause you know, he was this like very cool is, he okay, didn't die. Um, he um, is this very cool electric eclectic guy you know he kind of comes in you know he dresses for the gig he's got a you know this amazing vibe to him this amazing attitude he is a rock and roll drummer but and relative to what you're saying he was always very 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 upfront these are the this is the way i drum you know sure i you know i will deliver the goods and when you take me out of this box you know I'm going to have to find a way to deal with it. And he did over and over and over, but in his comfort zone. And again, he was, he is my musical soul brother. I mean, we listen to the same music. There's a, there's a line from a great Springsteen song. We like the same music. We like the same bands. We like the same clothes. And that really was, is me and Joe. I mean, so we had this kind of thing and, and even more than the nitpicking part of it, the opposite of that is the intuitive part of it. The things I'd never had to call, Correct. never have to call that he would just know instinctively what to do because we have the same musical dictionary. And that is, I'm finding as I start to play with other drummers, fine drummers, you know, technically skilled drummers, there's a layer of drumming, I guess probably of any instrument, but you know, drumming because it's, um, um, what would be the right word? There's, you know, it's such a, um, it is the most other than perhaps the lead singer in a rock band, uh, the drummer, the role of the drummer is the one that can influence the rest of the band the most. I agree. Right. You bring another guitar player in, they're going to play solos differently, but okay. Now the solo's over. We're back to the tune, right? <laughs> you know, the tune is three, four, five minutes and yeah. the drum is a constancy in every part of that three, Correct. four, five minutes. Correct. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah, that's that's yeah, right. Yeah, this isn't rocket science. It's just how yeah. it works. Yeah. And and uh, you know, I'm finding that those are the things. And and as we get some distance, well, I can appreciate a lot of the different technical and also just, you know, I, and we're playing with a couple of really fine drummers right now who are adding some really cool things. Um, but I'm still having a hard time getting away from and, and I find myself as I as we start to move to looking to a new guy to replace a new guy. I'm having to ask myself on every song, is that better, worse or just different? And, you know, the the feeling of 15 years of that great backbeat in in my heart and soul and ears and, and ass, you know, you, you know, that's with me on a constant basis. And so, yeah. you know, and you got to let that go. That's the worst part. Really hard. Really yep. hard. Yep. Yeah. It's. um. It's not, I mean, I, I guess I was going to say it's not like just replacing somebody at, at, uh, at your desk job, but it, it's the same thing, right? It's you well, he's get, part of the team. He's part, part of the, the sound. You, you he's part it. of the, the culture. He's part of the brotherhood. I mean, we're a very close knit band. Yeah. And that is like, a, you know, a surgical replacement of your heart. It's, you know, it's, yeah. And it, but it, that's the thing is it, you, it, there's, it's very difficult to do this surgically. Like there, it's going to be a little bit messy uh, in terms of getting, getting the band back to uh, it, it, back to the same level. It's not going to be the same. It, the, the band, I guarantee you the band will be different with a new drummer. Yeah. And that's like, that's perhaps the hardest pill to swallow with all of this, right? Is you have this thing and in a sense, it's gone um, now, if, from the audience's standpoint, many people, many people will the people that know Joe will miss Joe's personality. But in terms of like groove and stuff, and I say this as as, you know, a drummer and I, I care deeply about what I do. But I know that for the most part, people don't really care. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. that it's like, oh, somebody's playing the song that I know. Woo, I'll sing along, you know, like, ah, OK, screw you. But, it, you know, people will miss that personality of him. But you guys in the band will miss so much more than just that. Right. Well, his sense of humor, you know, his, yep. the way he would break the ice, the way when he needed a pickup from us that yeah. it would make us react to him. You know, like if he was having a, a you know tough day or, you know, sure. you know other things, the very um, um, delicate way. Cause he's a very proud guy. Um, the very delicate way that he would let people know, Hey, you know, I need a little bit of a helping hand here yeah. and you just want to help him, you know, sure. and that, that brings the rest of the band together. And so, you know, it's all those very intricate social things yeah. that um, delicate social things, you know, 
it's not that there are, aren't other good guys out there, right? They, you know, they're going to be good guys. And not that there's other good drummers out there. There's going to be good drummers out there. But it is, um, you know. It's going to be different. Yeah, it's going to be different. And change when you've had it so good is particularly hard. Yeah. I will tell you that it's really interesting. So you drummers are crazy people. I'll tell you that. As I've started the process, <laughs> <laughs> as I started the process, so, you know, I reached out to some of the really good local guys in my area who might be interested. Um, I've reached out to, to leaders of some of the, you know, broader Bay Area bands that I'm friends with, you know, to see who they use as subs who might be, sure. who might yeah. be interested. And I've gone the path of taking a Craigslist ad. And I have a lot to say about this Craigslist ad because it's, it's really kind of interesting. So I, I gave enough information to say, you know, the band works a lot, gets paid, been in business 18 years, you know, close knit guys, great situation for the right guy. I want you to send me all you can tell me about you and, um, and some video and we're going to whittle it down and, you know, we'll invite the people who we think are going to be the best fit to come audition for us. Yeah. The first guy gives me nothing that I've asked for and, and says, if you want my services, you're gonna have to tell me more about you. And, uh, you know, my first reaction was not a very productive, you know, if you want a job, not, not a very, yeah, we're this, we're not going to march down this path together. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And, and my only side thought to this was, I guess there is a, a, a type of thinking where every invitation to join a band by is a, by definition, a democratic thing and everybody has equal weight, you know, instantly. I, there is, there is that type of thinking that I think a lot of musicians probably have. It's incorrect. Oh, so, you you know, no bands where the new guy should um, assume that he's going to come in and he's going to have equal amount of uh, uh, or, or, you know, once you're in, you're in and you have equal amount of decision making. It's always a it's always a job audition interview is is what joining a new band is. That, that, that's what I hear you saying. Yeah, it, totally. I mean, it, it I guess it depends on the band, but and, and certainly interviewing for any job, be it, you know, a gig with a band or a gig with a company or whatever. You like that guy's concern and interest is important. You you don't just want them to find out about you. You want to find out about them. But I mean, somebody's got to break the ice. <laughs> yeah. And and if if you express an unwillingness to do that, like an explicit unwillingness. Well, to that's do what that, I'm saying. I, that's what I heard weird. was, yeah, yeah, you don't follow directions, right? No. We're, we're are we're off on a bad foot here. You would you didn't you didn't read the email. You didn't follow directions. So. Yeah, you know, I, like when I saw the ad for Uptown Celebration, you know, and it was a Craigslist ad. I didn't know these people. I didn't know that I knew these people. Um, it turns out we've we like we've we've danced in very, very close circles, but never quite together. Uh, but. I saw this ad and it was a very long, detailed ad and it asked for some specific things. And. So I went back and I wrote a very long, detailed response with specific things. And that included like links to videos and description of what I do and, you know, what my what 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 I'm currently doing, because they were asking about that. I answered every question that they had. And it took me, you know, all of about seven minutes. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't a 30 second email, but it wasn't four hours either. You know, it took just a little bit of attention and. When I talked to those guys, like we were talking about at the last gig and they said, uh, oh, yeah, he says you wouldn't you you would have been shocked to see how many people just wrote me like you got, you know, one word responses. He's like, I just deleted him. I wasn't interested because yep. I put out there who we were. And 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 Gary is a you know, he he's a student of human nature. He's a salesman through and through. So he's like, if somebody wasn't going to reply, if somebody wasn't going to read that and understand that by us putting something detailed out there, they should give us something detailed back. Then that's the wrong person for our band. It's your first impression. It's totally. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a litmus test too. Is like, are, are you going to like, we've shown you who we are in this case, you've shown them who you are. Like, are they going to reply in kind or are they going to try and take it in their own direction? And then yeah. you don't need somebody that's going to take it in their own direction on day one, maybe on, you know, day 400. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> So that's the first thing is, is, you know, the type, the, the many people have responded as I've asked. And that's pretty cool. Sure. I got a couple of great applications from some woman, women drummers who are really very good drummers, Sweet. Uh, which I was surprised, you know, out of maybe 10 responses so far, uh, two have been from women who are very, 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 very technically competent drummers. Um, I got uh, 
several, I'd say six of the 10 uh, are metal drummers. There are a lot of metal drummers out there, but they say they can play anything. Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, at some point you just got to get together and play, uh, you know, you do. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. I, I, they should, I'm they should actually, come out here, man. Like there are so many metal bands looking for drummers around here uh, that they should just swap coasts. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about this. So, you know, if someone hasn't been playing in the general style that, that I like, I, you know, if someone has been, that's going to catch my attention more. Yeah. If someone's going to have to adapt what they do every day. And again, I know a great musician can, you know, can do that. Sure. But I would think if your heart lies in metal, you're going to have a hard time playing Blues Brothers. Well, even if you're not going to have a hard time playing Blues Brothers, and, and it depends. I say this as someone that a long time ago gave up on any thought about, I only want to play the music that I like it mm -hmm. because I learned, I generally like the music that I'm playing and it doesn't matter what kind of music it is. Right. Um, so it, it, but, but I feel like, in fact, my experience continually teaches me that I am in a minority with that mindset. A mm -hmm. lot of people will get, into a band or, you know, get on stage and be like, Oh, I can't believe I have to play Mustang Sally. It's like, you know what, man? Okay. But once you're like in the second chorus, are you still feeling that way or are you in it? Cause if you're not in it by the second chorus, man, like this is a bad fit for you. And I see some people that, you know, they roll their eyes, like in the middle of the tune, like, Oh, here but we you're go. You're saying, you're saying like, if you can't see how much people are enjoying this and the band is grooving and all's right with the world, if you're not there, this is not the right deal for you. This is not like, the right like deal point. for you. Yeah. Yeah. But also if they right out of the gate are telling you, I am a metal drummer, like what's going to happen in eight to 12 months? Are they going to start feeling frustrated? Like, Oh, I, you know, I got all these gigs. It, I can't go play metal now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, is 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 that an itch they need to scratch? Because if it is like you got to be real clear about that conversation up front. Like, yeah. You know, I dealt with that with horn guys and jazz gigs. Sure. Right? Yeah. Of and course. At, at the right. end of the day, work usually trumps, you know, work if it's a decent situation. The yes. guy who is that much of a purist who needs to go play only his thing and needs to sacrifice a commitment for that. You know, that's a that's a tough. That's not a pro. Right. No. That's that's correct. <laughs> yeah. But there's I told a you, lot I had a of, horn player. I had a horn player who um, said, hey, um, I know six months ahead. I know we have that gig on, you know, I think he told me back in, in March, back in, you know, on September. But I have a chance to go play a jazz gig and I'd like to go do that. And I'm like, yeah, oh, we you have mentioned a gig that. And it's six months notice. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like, yeah, but it's good to do something different every once in a while. I said, well, should I take that as if you want to do that to me, should I assume that I should do that to you? Right. You know, I've been pretty clear. Commitment is, is, you know, a large part of you keeping this gig. Right. Um, you know, and you know, he, he acquiesced. Yeah. But you, you like, I would just take that as a warning sign. Like, and, and maybe it's not, you know, a total red light, but it's the, it's the warning yeah. flag. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah. Have a conversation about that before things get too long. Like, you know, and, and it's so hard when, when you're hiring someone for anything to get honest answers out of them, because if they really want the gig, they're going to believe they are telling you the honest truth, but really <laughs> what they're telling you is pieces of the honest truth, right? It's yeah. like, I'm not lying to you. I just am not including all of my thoughts as many people do when they do go to a job. That's you. it. Right. You know that that's going to happen. So you got to be able to. And I, and I know you've done this, you know, I mean, in, in many walks of your life. So, you know, just be there to feel like be careful of that, because the last thing you want to do is have to go through this again in six months. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it can't happen. Well, so we're going to be. It, but it could. And that, well, that's the thing to look out for. Yeah, I agree. And, and actually, you know, I was talking about how I have nine guys, yeah. 10 guys, including Bill, uh, and, you know, our sound guy has a, has a, you know, real specific opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, my uh, criteria is that someone has to want to be in a band. And so two really good drummers dropped out. They're yep. pros. And they're like, well, I can't, I can't, you know, promise you I'm going to prioritize everything because I go to LA for a session or I, you know, do this yeah. and, and okay, cool. We had that conversation. Thank you for being honest and, and we're good. Yeah, that that um, would be the conversation you would have with me. 
if, 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 if we, you know, if I came in off the street, that would be like, yeah. okay, well, how often do you gig? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Like that's not going to work. Yeah. And and that actually is going to take a bunch of people. And it's kind of interesting because I have this, you know, this wildly optimistic because I think the house rockers is a really good gig because it works a lot. Good guys, pro sound, you know, pays well. You know, I think it's a really good gig. It It is. It's so it, it is a great gig uh, for you. <laughs> no, no. And for anyone that wants exactly the same thing that you want out of a band, but, but you, you, but that is not universal, right? We all, right. We all have different things. So you might find exactly the right drummer feel wise, personality wise and all that. And he, you know, like he might say, yeah, but I only want to gig like three times a month. Got it. So part of the right drummer is going to be like the other nine musicians I play with yes. guys, similar, um, understanding of commitment, time in perspective, yep. you know, goal goals. Go- is it's the really word, goals right? that at yeah. that point, but, and, and as, as far down the line as that might seem at this point, it, it might be the most important factor, right? Uh, um, it, it, well, I'll tell you this, my wild eyed optimism that there's some magic drummer out there who's going to make the band pop in entirely new ways, all great ways, going to bring a great show, you know, going to be in my hip pocket as the leader, you know, all the time. Um, and those guys, like I've seen, like, you know, I've talked a lot about the music series I did. And a lot of these guys have those types of bands, but, um, they are somewhat interchangeable parts, Yep. you know, a roving group of pros who's available for that gig on that day, put on the suit and, and you fit in, you know, with the rest of the band. Um, I'm actually, you know, coming more down to earth that the right guy, his available, you know, I, I think there are a lot of guys, you know, what we're doing, like you said, is not, is not rocket science. Right. It, I, you know, I don't need Dave Weckles, you know, you know, to be my drummer. No, there, right. a lot of guys are going to be able to handle the chore of my drums, add some specialness, have great chops, have great time, you know, is, is, you know, yeah. really that's, high on. Our yeah. Part. From a playing standpoint, that's going to be the most important thing for you, yeah. for your band. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, like I said, I'm coming down to earth that, that my perspective that there's a magic drummer out there. Um, I think we will get a great drummer, but availability, you know, cause we do play a lot yep. and, and we do rehearse a lot and we do, you know, expect a lot that is going to be um, a pass fail for a lot of people. Yes. And even people with really good intentions who can say, yes, it's up to me to discern whether they really can mean yes. Like, you know, they I've know, done this with totally. others. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, no one's lying to me for the sake of lying to me. I'll get the gig and we'll figure out later. Nobody wants that uncomfortable situation down the road. Yep. It's in good intentions, but I think a lot of people are wildly optimistic about things. So I ask so, questions. So you know, let, me, about well, let, me, let me ask you some questions, though. Um, first of all, number one, you're going to have to rehearse uh, way more than than you think to get a new drummer up to speed. Uh, yeah. Yep. And so be ready for that. And And if you skip out on that. Understand that even with the best drummer, the gigs are going to be rough around the edges because it's yeah. it's all of those stops and and breaks and all that communication that only comes with time uh, together. So that's number one. That wasn't a question. But my, my question for you is, you know, what happens when you you find like you go through this process, you find the right guy. Uh, you're heading into your winter season. So the timing of this, and I'm sure this isn't accidental. I'm sure you probably had these conversations with Joe and Joe was thinking about you. And as the timing of this happens, this is your lighter season in terms of gigs. So, you know, you do your rehearsals, you're rehearsing whatever, once, maybe even twice a week for a month or two, getting somebody up to speed. You play a few gigs through the winter, you get into the summer and halfway through the summer, this guy says, look, this is like double what I can handle um, like I'll, I'll finish out the summer with you, but, but if next summer is going to be like this, you got to find somebody else. What, yeah. ha- what, what happens then? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> let, me, let me, I got, there's a lot to cover there. So yeah. that happened to me with a guitar player, right? Oh, great okay. guitar player. Yeah. Great guy. Great guitar player was a little bit, you know, you're only going to get a couple songs to sing. You know, this is a sideman gig and he was, he'd been a front man in another, in another band. He goes, Nope, I haven't played in a band for about a year. I'm really just want to be in someone else will do all the heavy lifting. I get my couple minutes to shine, you know, cool. That really was not what, again, he, I think he meant it when he said it, but we, you know, we went through a summer and he didn't get enough gigs, enough songs. He didn't get enough spotlight. 
And he really wanted to lead a band at the end of the day is what it was. So even if I gave him a couple more songs, it wouldn't, that wouldn't have solved it. So he said, listen, I'm, I'll, I'll stay with you until you find somebody, but you know, this is not the long, and he was really good about it. He stayed with it for quite a while until we found someone. And then, you know, we had to replace him. So, you know, it, I think the answer to that goes back to drilling, drilling, drilling down. What is your day job? What is your family situation? Yep. Do you have young kids, you know, getting, making as good and intelligent, yes. uh, you know, and in fact, you know, one of the things I say is we occasionally have 4 p.m. sound checks 60 miles away, two or three times a year. We, yeah. You know, would you be able to do that? Tell me about the flexibility of your job, yep. you know, and you, you, the best we can do is get a feel. Now, a couple of the guys that we're going to audition. So the path is I'm sp- putting the net out right now. And then in November, we're going to do auditions. And, you know, I've got a very specific audition process in mind. I'm going <laughs> to. That's good. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to pick a song from this genre, a song for that genre, get the different feels. I'm going to ask the you know, musician, the drummer, I'm going to call these songs, you know, like, you know, really big thing to me. Like even when you played with us, I want to see how strongly a drummer holds the end of the ending chord of a song, you know, until I count in another song. Yeah, right. A lot right. of songs just fade. I don't know whether they get tired or they get self-conscious or what the deal is, but a lot of drummers are really shy to do that. Huh. Um and so, uh, uh, you know, I want to run it like a, a mini set of five songs. I'll probably let the drummer choose one or two songs from our song list, but it'll be a five song audition. You know, do they come on time? You know, are they prepared? Did they learn the songs? A couple of the songs are going to have real like wood shedding. I want to see yeah. if you put in the time because yeah. this is a real thing. Anyway. No, so, that, that's how Gary ran the, the Uptown auditions. And it's the best model to follow cool. because because it 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 lets you very quickly see how much someone can prepare five songs is, you know, but a, but a fraction of what they're going to need to do. But if they can't show up and do that and nail it, then they're the wrong person for your band. Right. Yep. So my point to this is I, you know, I'm putting the net out there yeah. auditions in November yep. and part of the whole process, like I said, there's a couple of really good local guys who I, we already know they play or have played in other bands in our circle that, you know, for whatever circumstances they might be available. And they, 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 you know, the three of the guys, you know, any of the three could be a good fit. Sure. Um, at, at least from what I know right now, they could be a good fit. Right. right, um, right. And I, you know, I know them well enough guys who I don't know well enough. I'm actually going to call other bandmates. You know, I'm going to say, you know, this is a big decision for us. This is a 20 year commitment. And so I, you know, I need to know more about you. You know, are there any other musicians that you played with that I can, that I can, you know, get to know a little bit and ask a couple of questions. So it's like referrals. And I know mm-hmm. that sounds kind of legalistic, but you know, like I said, this is, no, you got to vet I these people. There, you got to vet these people. Yeah. And it's, and it's hard to vet somebody, even as honest as someone can be, it's hard to vet somebody by talking to them. That's it's just not a complete picture. Yeah. Right. And it's why kind of the local guys who I kind of know already have a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, totally. All good players. So you know, now that now the interesting thing is people who are responding by Craigslist, plus the people I know, plus the people who are referred by really, you know, trusted sources, I'm gonna have a lot of really, really good drummers. Yeah. And then it's gonna be interesting to see how the band deciphers the subtle nuances. Well, you know, it's not like you know, I'm not going to invite anybody. Everybody has to give me a video or I have to know them. It's not going to, uh, it's going to be six flavors of great, you know? Yeah. And right. One guy will do the tower of power stuff a little bit better. One guy will do the straight rock better. Yep. One guy might sing one guy might, you know? Yeah, exactly. Have, right. Have, yeah. You're you, you, It's not an apples to apples thing that you, you're going to have to pick which flavor apple you like the best. That's right. And one guy, might bring with him better gig opportunities. Maybe he works oh, yeah. you know, in an event cup, right? So oh, there's yeah. a lot of objective, right. yep. objective and subjective things. We have one guy who we want to invite, good drummer, um, really, really good singer. Uh-huh. Um, definitely would add to our harmonies, you know, can can do some things that we can't do now, currently now. Sure. Uh, or, or would just do them different. Um, and so, you know, he has that dimension. So, that's the process I'll be sharing with you as we kind of go yeah, along. Yeah, so I'm looking said, forward to it, man. Yeah, the net is out there. Rehearsal, the auditions in November. I want to decide in December. And then the next part of this is kind of what you were alluding to is my band has 200 songs. And we really have enjoyed being able to call any one of those 200 songs for quite a while. You know, this is a band has been together. We have, you know, the, we've been playing these songs together for a I, long time. I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to go away. Well, but how much is it going to go away is the question. So the guys we've been playing with now, we have 40 songs of those guys. Yeah. You know, two drummers, you know, primarily that have been subbing for us. And uh, 
they're, you know, between the easy stuff they're getting, the the stuff with the brakes and the stops, you know, 70% getting better every gig type of thing. Yep. 200 songs will go away. I guess I'm prepared for that. I'm very, 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 very sad about yeah. that. Well, the reason 200 songs I goes away. Songs. Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing is, is these drummers haven't. Right. So you can't call a song that you haven't played in four years, even though four years ago you played it, you know, every gig for three years in a row. Right. And and so everybody else in your band knows that song. It's going to be a little rusty, but you'll have fun doing it. It's like, oh, I remember when we used to do this and it comes back together and you sort of remind each other, even musically, just remind each other how it happens. Your yep. drummer wasn't a part. Your new drummer wasn't a part of that. And so it, there's just no way. You, you would have to prep him ahead of the gig. You can't, I mean, or say, all right, we're going to try it. And, you know, Timmy hasn't played this one with us before, but we're going to make it. You know what I mean? And, and, and onward you go. Yeah. I think it's all those things, Dave. I think right. one thing is, you know, uh, understanding the person's musical dictionary and musical repertoire coming into totally. the band is interesting. Yep. So, you know, maybe part of that magic drummer is going to be that he has an overlap with the song. This is why the, the metal drummers are going to be hard yeah, exactly. because my sense is, is that yep. they're not listening to this music, right? They can, they can technically do it, but they don't feel it and they don't listen to it. But, you know, so maybe one of the criteria will be, here's our song list. How much is, you know, yeah, check them uh, off. That's right. <laughs> it, yeah. Interestingly, I've asked that question. And how much of these songs are, do you know and are ready to play is an extraordinarily subjective response, right? Yeah, you still can't you know, get an on, honest answer out of somebody, right? You cannot. I, you know, it's everywhere from I heard that song well, you once know what? to maybe, I played maybe that song you, once 25 years ago. Maybe you do that at your audition is give them a list of of your tunes and say, OK, I here, like that. right. Here's here's a list of things that I didn't tell you about. And, it, you know, you maybe know a good song for that. American Girl, because it has a very unique beat. Yeah. Right. Yep. And uh, everybody says they know it. And I think most most rock bands have taken a stab at it when, you know, classic rock bands have taken yeah. a stab at it twice. Right. Yeah. But but I mean, really, what you want to find out is how honest is somebody uh, <laughs> uh, how accurate. I don't even want to use honesty because it, it implies that they're lying to you. Sure. But how accurate can somebody reflect their own uh, their own abilities? Right. And so it's it's OK. Here's these 20 songs. Pick one. Yeah. And we'll play it right now. And we know you didn't prep this, you know, but pick one that, you know, and then let's just go through it and see what happens. And really what you're looking for is how accurately uh, can that person reflect what they think they know? Right. Yeah. Do they do they do they say, oh, I know American Girl, let's play it. And then they don't know that that turnaround and the, the different groove for the bridge. Right. You, you know, or. If they pick American Girl, the very first question any drummer should ask when you're doing American Girl for the first time with a band is, how do you guys end this song? Mm. Because no one ends it the same. Right. And if you don't ask that question, it means either you didn't think about it until it was too late. And then that's one piece of information. Or the other is you've never actually you don't have enough experience with this song to have to, to, to know to ask that question. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, so that's <laughs> just a really smart. So, you know, because American go Girl process. came up at the last gig. Those guys ah. called it and they're like, they're like, Did oh, we'll play American Girl. And I'm like, hang on. Before we get to the end, <laughs> how do you end this song? They're like, oh, good question. We do it totally differently. I'm like, yeah, I know because it fades on the record. Everybody does it differently and that's okay. Let's that's have fun. 10 seconds of conversation. And we told the end worked totally fine. And it's it was a hundred percent different than any of the other, you know, 15 bands I've played that song with. So, yeah. Got it. <laughs> That's great. The American girl test. <laughs> the Amer that, yeah. And actually, it's actually a very good test, right? It's a really good interesting test. Interesting beat, a little bit of dynamic that you need to know about. Yes. Right? Yep. A breakdown. Yeah. And, you know. Ask the question about an ending. That's really smart. Do you think a jam is worthwhile or in a band that's playing songs, you know, I, I think bands like to jam as part of an audition process. I just don't know how much value it adds to the type of thing I'm doing. I have done. I, I mean, I've auditioned for countless bands um, and for a band like yours, it would surprise me. I don't know. I mean, you guys stretch out solo sections. So certainly. Perhaps, you know, saying, OK, we'll, you know, we'll do this one three times around or whatever and and letting it open up a little bit so you can see how how this guy, you know, can can let loose and play a little. That would, I think, be smart in terms of that as a jam session. But but just like a loose freeform jam, I don't know that that would give you the information that you want. 
and it, it and it would probably burn a lot of time. So there you go. All right. So I'll, I'll report back in as this process gets more interesting. Hopefully we'll have a guy picked by December 1st. Yeah, man. We start our process, you know, how many of those 200 songs will we end up being able to retain for all that work we put into charting them and, you know, getting them done? You know, what, what will my band be next year? Will you know, will we still resonate and mean as much to the people that we've been trying to mean a lot to yeah. for a while? That's, you know, like I said, that's one of the biggest that's, things. That's but yeah. That's the ultimate. Joe, test, that's Joe right. was the, Joe was the soul of that. And yeah. uh, so I guess, you know, just to close today, just want to send love to my great friend, Joe. And I, you know, I hope he continues to drum because it's in him. It is who it, he is. And, you know, whether he finds something that's more in the time yeah. commitment that he is comfortable with, he's just too fine a musician. I will tell you this. Nobody I know, even you, nobody I know does rock and roll mean more to than Joe. I mean, he is that kid yeah. who saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan and it changed his life. And it's been a part of his identity. I'm getting a little choked up here. I, you know, and I admire that so much in those moments. And I'm going to retire Born to Run from the House Rockers because that was my and his song. Oh, it, man, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine playing that no matter how great someone I may find out there is just my buddy. Who I love so much. So, you know, Joe, I know you listen to this thing and, you know, tried to handle this whole subject fairly delicately, but, um, for everything you've done for my musical life, I just want to say much love and, and, uh, our friendship goes on and, and I'll miss those times. Hopefully we'll have those opportunities to plug in and make some good noise in the future. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. Just because you're not playing in this band together doesn't mean that there's no opportunity again in the future too. So that's good. Amen. Yeah. All right, folks, that'll, uh, that'll do it for today. Next week. I want to go, I want to dig into something that you said today. It was a quick little phrase. You said my couple of minutes to shine. And I think that means something different to <laughs> every single person, but it is an important thing to address both when doing what you're doing, bringing someone new into a band, but also kind of looking around at the people you've been in a band with for decades and making sure everybody feels like they have their, their turn to shine. And I've, I've learned some lessons about this recently too. So that's what we'll talk about next week. And, uh, and we'll take it from there until cool, then always be performing always, always do it like Joe and you'll be all right. There you go. 